a person attains realization, it's like the moon's reflection in water. The moon never becomes wet, the water is never disturbed. When the Dharma has not yet fully penetrated body and mind, one thinks one is already filled with it. When the Dharma fills body and mind, one thinks something is still lacking. When a fish swims, no matter how far it swims, it doesn't reach the end of the water. When a bird flies, no matter how high it flies, it cannot reach the end of the sky. If there are fish that would swim or birds that would fly only after investigating the entire ocean or sky, they would find neither path nor place. When we make this very place our own, our practice becomes the actualization of reality, Genjo Koan. Uh, that is what Dogen Zen said in Genjo Koan. Like a, a fish in the ocean or a bird in the sky. And what Dogen said is if a fish or a bird want to know what the meaning of the entire ocean or entire sky before actually swimming or flying, there's no way we can live. We can, no way we can start something. But when I was a high school student, I was really like that uh, bird or fish. I want to know the meaning of life before I make any decision. And I couldn't find any meaning in this life. So I, was, I became a kind of a nihilistic. And when I did Genjo Koan, I found I need to f start to do something. I need to find a place. And to me, the place was the cushion on which I'm sitting. And when we, I found the place for me, then I found the path, the direction I have to walk. Before starting anything, there's no way we can find a meaning. There's no such a uh, fixed meaning that was offered before we are born. That teaching by Dogen in Genjo Kowan was really helpful and important. So when I start to uh, practice Zazen, I can understand the meaning of this practice. I need to st study Buddhism. Then, uh, you know, there's a direction I need to walk. And after I understand, I thought and I understood the importance of this practice, then how I have to find the way, how can I share this teaching and practice with others. And that is my path I need to walk with certain direction. So to find the place, and then we can see the path. Uh, then which direction we need to go, I think is important. Otherwise our life becomes really meaningless. You know, I just want to satisfy my like and dislike or such uh, desires without any direction. I too want to find my place and my path. I am ready to study. How do I begin the practice of learning to manage consciousness? my consciousness. So what's the big deal? I think what I want to think. What is there to manage? Only everything. Managing my relationship to consciousness impacts everything that occurs in the interior expanse of my being. This is where I exercise the freedom I am at my core, in my essence, in choosing relationships something much deeper than thinking. I'm certain someone must have an app for this kind of thing. I'll just wait until technology can do this for me. Artificial intelligence is getting pretty good. 
Have you heard about the practice they now have for assisting us in managing consciousness? It will actually allow the consciousness of one human being to be transferred into the consciousness of another human being. You're kidding, right? You can't expect me to believe this. This sounds like the Star Trek mind meld. Yes, it's true. And there's more. Not only does this practice allow for the transfer of consciousness from one human being into another, but the people involved do not need to be in the same physical space. They can actually be in different parts of the world. This is pretty far-fetched, but you have my attention. There's more. This practice actually allows the transfer and sharing of deep interior consciousness from one person to another over differing time periods of days, weeks, months, or even years. It's like time disappears. Yeah, right. I'm not buying this. But there's more. This practice can support the transfer of consciousness from one human being to another when one of the individuals is already dead, even, perhaps, for hundreds of years. Okay, okay. So what is this special technology? How do I buy this app? What is this absurd practice you are describing for transferring interior consciousness from one person into another? It is called reading. Hmm, you got me. Read myths. They teach you that you can turn inward, and you begin to get the message of the symbols. Read other people's myths, not those of your own religion, because you tend to interpret your own religion in terms of facts. But if you read the other ones, you begin to get the message. So the mind is involved in all these things, but when we're talking about consciousness and the conscience of consciousness, we're, we're out of our minds, using the minds to be out of our minds, which is a funny kind of way to talk. Uh, and, but th this is what religious symbols are do for you, is funny ways to talk. And where if you try to take religious symbols literally, like the virgin birth or something, it really doesn't make very good sense and it really irritates the scientists in, in the room. Uh, to talk about being born without uh, proper happenings in the past between men and women, right? Uh, but if you take virgin birth symbolically as realizing that you have a birth that is quite undependent on who your parents are, uh, you have a birth that is just not to be understood that way that uh, there is such a thing as being reborn in a profound sense of touching in to the fact that your true mother or your true father is reality. Hmm? There you begin to get a sense of what the real meaning of the virgin birth is about and that your children are all virgin born. And there's so much of the Bible I never read, and we, we do Lexio Divina together often in the mornings. And so there's pieces of the Bible I'm like, Jesus said that? <laughs> and it's so radical, it's so profound, it's, I get chills. So one part is just like I'm covering more ground in Christianity than I ever did. <laughs> I remember picking up the Bible and reading as like a teenager. There was a lot that I didn't read and a lot that I didn't understand. So we'll take a piece of one little reading and we'll talk about it in the light of what's going on in our lives and it's extremely applicable. There's always something in there that we can really look at how it addresses our life, how we want to move towards something bigger or, or more in line with how we want to live. So it motivates it, it inspires. When we give all our attention and energy to the task or practice before us, we can truly penetrate it. We work on the practice, study it, experiment with it, and care for it. 
we do this over and over again with whatever we encounter. One thing at a time, each time. This is how we study the characteristics of all things. One thing at a time. When we practice whatever role we are in sincerely, we penetrate that role. When we make a mistake, we penetrate that mistake and learn from it. Then our mistakes become great teachers for us. Nothing is meaningless when we have our own place and path. In reality, our place and path are not something outside us. Our place and path are nothing other than ourselves. I was converted, you might say, to pursue contemplative prayer uh, when I was about 17, uh, during my first year at Yale University. And so I was reading books about contemplative prayer and centering prayer uh, as a term didn't exist yet. So. So I, whatever progress I had made was uh, based on, on pursuing the traditional teachings about meditation, especially Lexio Divina, but Lexio Divina not as a separate method, but Lexio Divina leading to resting in God. That is to say, moving beyond the words uh, and the thoughts about the words and the feelings that the thoughts gave rise to, to, uh, from time to time, resting in God, which is my understanding of what Lexio Divina is supposed to do. It, it's not spiritual reading. It's a specific kind of way of reading that leads into interior silence, and increasingly so, that, so that the other acts, how much you read, how much you think and reflect, how much you uh, express your aspirations, becomes briefer, and the silence becomes longer. There is only one ultimate journey. This ultimate journey traverses from absolute unknowable mystery to absolute unknowable mystery. It is upon the practice of this journey I discover and choose my place and my path. Throughout history, we have attempted to construct maps of this path over the interior abyss. These maps represent the great wisdom traditions. These maps are a testament to the reality that within this ultimate mystery, human beings are forever lost. Yet, to function beyond psychosis, we require a map. Maps are good. Maps are temporal. Maps are human-made. All maps are, finally, insufficient. The ultimate journey is a journey beyond maps. I'm ready to embrace the paradox and explore these fragile but necessary maps. Come search the special library of the deep place with me. A mind meld awaits. <laughs>